All right, brothers and sisters, it's time to celebrate once again the precious birth of our Lord Jesus. Now, we know that you all are excited about Jesus, so let's, let's just start singing some of those awesome Christmas carols that mean so much to us. So are you ready? Let's start singing. Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching For silent flocks by night Behold throughout the heavens Their shine Welcome, everyone, to our first ever Christmas Eve online service here at Wetaskiwin Full Gospel Fellowship. We are so glad that you have decided to be a part of this Christmas celebration tonight. Um, you are really in for a treat. As you can tell, I'm excited. I'm dressed for the part. I've decided to wear my best uh, Christmas uh, sweater here. Uh, I'm even wearing Christmas socks. You, you don't need to see them, but you know, that's, that's the fact. They're there. So uh, I, I'm excited about this tonight. There's a lot of hard work that has went into the production of this uh, Christmas Eve service, and you folks are really in for a treat. I, I recognize that this has not been an easy year for many. Uh, in fact, it's been a really difficult year, a year like any other for a lot of us. Um, the truth is, I've been so blessed this year and so thankful for the hard work and the talents and the creativity of so many of our staff and volunteers and congregation this year. Now we've been able to come together to make church a reality uh, in this new digital world that we have to be a part of. And tonight, we are going to see the fruit of a lot of that labor for the last few weeks now. Ben and Margaret have been meeting here at the church uh, with a lot of you folks, uh, individually or in family groups to make sure that it's been safe, but they've been meeting together for a purpose, 
They've been recording uh, the uh, singing and the music contributions of uh, dozens, really, of our church members. Tonight, we are going to hear the fruit of all that labor and see, uh, because they've been videoing as well, we're going to see the fruit of that labor. Uh, all, all in all, I believe we've got nearly 40 different people that are going to be contributing tonight to this uh, Christmas Eve service. And the fact is, they were all in this building at different times. Uh, and, and that is just amazing to me. Uh, the reason why these people have been recording has been because Ben and Margaret have been working hard on a surprise for us here at Full Gospel. Um, they have been putting together our first ever Christmas album at Wetaskiwin Full Gospel Fellowship. It's called Visions of Christmas. And tonight you're going to hear uh, lots of contributions towards that. There's going to be more on the actual album, but tonight you're going to get a real great representation of all the hard work and all the talent and all the time that went into this album. And you're going to hear a little bit more about it later how you can get a copy for yourself as well. But I personally am so thankful uh, for um, all of you for putting this together, but especially Ben and Margaret and the work they've done to make this a reality. So tonight is going to be a real treat for you. We're going to get to hear some singing. We're going to get to watch a little video. We're going to even get a chance to hear from Bill and Jenna tonight, so don't go too far away. I encourage you to get comfortable, uh, get a warm drink, gather your family together, and uh, I encourage you to write a little message here in the comments um, because the truth is, even though we're all in different homes and different rooms right now, this is meant to be a shared experience from our church family. Tonight, we celebrate Christmas, but more than anything else, we celebrate the one who was born at Christmas and really the reason for the season. Thank you for being a part of this celebration tonight, and uh, I look forward to what's in store for the rest of the night. God bless you all.
Hi. Hi everyone. Hello. From our family to yours, we want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas from our family to yours. Merry Christmas. We Merry miss Christmas. you guys. Merry Christmas from Gordon and Carol Stephenson. We hope you all stay safe. And have a wonderful and prosperous 2021. God bless you all. From our house to your house, we want to send all of you our blessings. For a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. In this season, may God give you great joy. Now, now bring, bring us, us some, some figgy, figgy pudding. pudding. We wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas and good health and happiness and blessings in the new year. Merry Christmas, everybody. From the Williams family to your family. We wish you a blessed new year. Miss you and love you all. Jesus, the light of the world has come. Merry Christmas to all of our friends at Full Gospel Fellowship. And love from our hearts to yours. God bless you. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. From Matt, Melissa, Haley, and Chloe and Charlie. All the best to you in 2021. Greetings from Pastor Glenn and Carolyn. At the end of a challenging year, our hope is still Jesus. So this Christmas season, let's celebrate Jesus. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. So I told you, um, we have amazing talent here at our church, and uh, it's, it's just been so great already. You've had the ability to hear a little bit. There's still more to come. Don't want you to go far. Right now, some of you may be wondering, how can I get a copy of this album you keep talking about? I want to have a copy of this for myself. Good news, you can get a copy. Um, if you want to go to our website, wfgf.org, uh, on that website, we're going to have a form for you to fill out. And any donation to our building project, our current building project, any donation that you want to make towards that, over $20, will mean that you can get a copy of our new Christmas album, Visions of Christmas. 
uh, right away, we can send you a download link. Uh, that can be done pretty soon here. Uh, if you need a hard copy, let us know, and we can make sure we can actually send you a CD uh, as soon as we, we can get everything in order for that. Um, there's still going to be more music to come, so I don't want you to go far. Right now, we're going to change gears a little bit. For the last few weeks, we've been um, watching a video series here every Sunday, uh, a little clip from that called The Glory of Christmas, and we have the conclusion for you tonight, followed by uh, a few thoughts that I have about Christmas, and then we're going to have some more music to come, so don't go far. Um, yeah. This is the story of a ragtag bunch of church members who set out to perform a Christmas play and the director who tried his hardest to just keep it all together. The Glory of Christmas. Our annual Christmas show is tonight and all the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears comes down to this very moment. And like, like any show, there's gonna be some last minute snafus. Um, like, like for example, my middle-aged Mary, she's been having contractions for about six, 16 hours. My Joseph hasn't memorized all his lines. Uh. A Amy? Mary, my, <laughs> my dear Mary, it's been a long journey. My wise man is convinced that the nativity set will collapse. And my shepherd can't find a lemon for his tea. Articulatory agility is a marvelous ability, manipulating with dexterity that we are telling the most beautiful and important story that's ever been told about an event that changed the world. We've lost the lamb. Mm -hmm. Quick, everyone make lamb noises. Call her back to the flock. He knows the lamb's a dog, right? Medical experts actually do not recommend this method for uh, dealing with panic attacks. But my mom recommends lavender behind the ears. Get away from me! I'm calling an ambulance. I think I'll be fine. It's for me. time. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Enjoy the show, guys. I have this long-held tradition, I guess you could call it. Every year during the performance, I, uh, I step off the stage and leave the building. I just want God to do what God does. And the shepherds came with haste, and they and found, found Mary, Mary and Joseph, Joseph and, the, and baby. the babe lying in the manger. Doesn't matter where you see the nativity story, whether it's on a street corner or, or in a church, or even on your neighbor's mantle. When you see it, you, you have to consider it then and there. Are you willing to kneel at the manger Will you believe in the miracle of Christmas, the glory of Christmas? Trust that this is the way that God chose to save us all. And all who heard it wondered at those things, which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned. Glorifying and worshiping God for all the things that they have seen and heard, as it was said unto them, Oh, man. So 
a few nights ago, um, me and my wife and my two sons, Judah and Malachi, we, we took a, a little trip around Wetaskiwin at night to see all of the Christmas decorations that were up. It was extremely fun. We stopped at uh, Tim Hortons first and got some snacks and some something to drink, and, and we were just driving through all of the streets looking for all of the great decorations that have been put up, and, and I'll be honest, I was impressed. There was a lot of great decorations, but as we got started, we noticed there was one particular type of decoration that was in short supply, and we sort of made a game. We, we decided that we would try to find as many nativity scenes as we could. I mean, amongst all of the, the lights and, and all of the blow-up Santa Clauses and, and all of the Grinch figures, we were trying to find some nativity scenes. And uh, that became pretty fun for us. We drove around all through the, the streets, and I can honestly say there weren't that many out there. And um, that was a little bit surprising to me, but not really surprising. You know, in all honesty, at our house, we've got a lot of decorations, not a lot of nativity scenes. But I think the thing that maybe surprised me the most is when we first brought it up, I suggested, hey guys, let's look for a nativity scene, to which one of my teenagers, and I get this, he's, he's a teenager who has been a pastor's kid his entire life and currently attends a Christian school and attends church very regularly and went through Sunday school and youth group and all that stuff, and, and for all this time, um, you know, he's, he's, he's heard the gospel message. He's went through all of these Christmases. And when I said, let's look for a nativity, the first response was, uh, what's a nativity? <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm like, what's a nativity? Come on, it's, it's the Christmas story. You've heard this. You've seen this. And we've got, we've got pictures of it at our house. And you should know more about it. But the truth is, he didn't know much about it because we don't talk a lot about it. We don't talk a lot about the nativity. The truth is that we only pull it out, you know, once a year. And then when Christmas is over, we tuck it away with the, the rest of all of the Christmas decorations. Now, here's the thing. Um, in our house, I recognized a few years ago that we needed to make sure that Christmas was more than just about Christmas. So we do have actually one painting that we leave up all year round in our house it's, it's a picture of an empty manger. Not quite a nativity scene, but it's just a manger, and it's empty. And underneath it says the words, God with us. And it's a reminder that the Christmas message is not so much a story of Jesus coming as a baby and just coming at that point, and then that's it. It's actually a story of Jesus coming and living his life and in a very real way still staying with us. The truth is, Jesus entered into our story way back then. And the reality is, he's still here with us now. And lots of times we only talk about this Christmas scene and this Christmas story around this time of the year. But the message of Christmas is so much bigger than that. It is a message of God with us. God interrupting our mess. We've been, over the last few weeks here at Full Gospel, we've been uh, watching a little video every week telling the story of a group of um, regular people putting together a Christmas program. It's called The Glory of Christmas. And you saw a video clip from that just a, a few minutes ago, the conclusion to that story. And I love it. It's funny. It's well done. But I kind of like the ridiculousness of it, right? These ridiculous characters putting crazy circumstances and coming together to give their gifts and their time and their ability to tell a beautiful story. And the truth is, that really is the message of Christmas. It almost is a little ridiculous when you think about it. The story of the creator of the universe, the king of the heavens, God in all of his glory coming to us in the form of a baby and living with us and eventually dying for us, coming into our mess and using very regular, ordinary people to do amazing things. In Scripture, in Matthew chapter 2, um, it's one of the first two uh, verses there, Matthew chapter 2, we, we, we hear about how uh, after Jesus is born and he's in Bethlehem, um, a group of 
individuals come from the East. And people call them different things. Some people call them wise men. Some people call them magi. Uh, in the New International Version, we call it magi. That's what's in the Bible. It says these, these guys traveled from the East. And they were asking, where is this special baby that's been born? This one who is to be your king. Where is he? We've seen his star. And we've come from far away to come and find him and worship him. And that's an interesting statement, but it's even more so when you realize the exact words they use when they said, we have seen his star. Now think about that. There's two ways of saying that. We could say it's his star because it is a a signal of who he is. It's a sign for him. It signifies somebody special. But in a very real way, it was actually his star, as in he owned it. This baby in a manger in a little town, in the middle of nowhere, is the one who created this star in the heavens. He created it. He owns it. And now he's lying in a manger. And here he is, right here. And these guys from a far off country saw this star and said, we're going to leave everything that we have, take some gifts, and travel many, many kilometers to find this new baby and present him with these gifts, and worship him, because he deserves it. At the end of the video we watched a few minutes ago, the director of that play, Joel, he asked the question, you know, what are you going to do when you see this nativity scene? What are you going to do when you realize that Jesus is who he says he is? And the truth is, that's a question that we all have to ask. What are we going to do with it? In this video series that we watched, we saw how these really regular people, these faulty people, these normal people were content to play minor roles in a big story, Jesus' story. And the truth is we're invited to do the same thing. We have an option. Do we continue to live our lives as if we are the stars of the story, as if it's all about us? And we get to be the stars of our very little story that means not really much of anything in the long term? Or are we content to be little players, little actors in God's big story and realize that Jesus is the star of the story and know that he's invited us to be a part of it with all of our faults and all of our failures and all of our inadequacies? He's looking for us to say yes. So at the end of the day, we're left with the option. Do we live our lives in such a way that we are the star of our little tiny story? Or do we live our lives in such a way that we are content to be small players in his big story?
This has been an amazing night. Uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have. And uh, we've still got a little bit more to come. Uh, but at this point, I just want to close off and say thank you so much for being a part of this online event. But more than that, for those of you that are uh, regular attenders, whether you've been coming to this church for years or whether you've been just tuning in for the last few months, or whether this is your first time here, whatever the case, I'm glad that tonight you've chosen to be with us and to be a part of our church celebration here. Uh, I just want to pray a blessing right now over all you folks as we end off the night. We've still got a little more singing to go, and we're going to uh, hear from Bill and Jenna, so don't go too far. But right now, I just want to say a quick prayer uh, for all of us here. Um, and again, from my family to your family, and on behalf of our staff here at Wetasco and Full Gospel Fellowship, I want to thank you. Thank you for being a part of this church. Thank you for all the kind words uh, and all the encouragement that you've been giving us all year long, and especially here at Christmas time. Uh, we do love you. We do miss a lot of you. We're looking forward to being able to see you in person, hopefully not too far into 2021. But whatever 2021 brings, uh, I'm thankful that I have my, I have my church family, and I'm thankful that God is in control. So let me just pray for us right now. Lord, we thank you so much for this year and all the blessings that you've brought. We thank you, Lord, for this church, Lord, and the blessings that it's been to so many during this difficult time. And Lord, as we've already said, we don't know what 2021 will hold, but we know that you hold 2021. So Lord, whatever comes our way, uh, we look forward to it. We look forward to you guiding and directing and Lord, I just pray that you would, um, you would just be with each and every one of us tonight. Remind us of the reality of this Christmas message. That you didn't just come and spend time here and leave, but you now live with us. You abide with us. You are with us. And I just pray tonight that you would continue to encourage and lift up each and every one of us that are watching here tonight. So Lord, we thank you so much tonight for the ability we have to be able to gather here together. Lord, I thank you that we can be together, even though physically we're in different places, uh, different provinces, different towns, different homes, maybe even different countries here tonight. But I thank you that we can still be together as one church and celebrate you, Lord. You are the reason for the season. 
And I just pray tonight that you would continue to remind us of that, that no matter what this next year holds, we can rest assured that you are in control, that you are with us, that you still are leading your church and guiding your church. And I pray tonight that we would go forward, not with fear and trepidation, but with joy and with peace and with hope. And I just pray, Lord, tonight that each one that's watching this tonight would truly be able to rejoice, uh, not because everything that's happened this year is good, but knowing that throughout this year you have been good and to know that you are with us through it all. That's the message of Christmas, God with us. Thank you for that, in Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Looking forward to seeing some of you in person this next week. Um, For the rest of you, I'm hoping that you'll join online. God bless you all. There's still a few more songs to come, so don't go too far. Thanks again to everyone who helped make this Christmas Eve service a reality. God bless you all, and good night. Oh, man, what a wonderful Christmas Eve service. Yeah, I know. Who knew that there were so many talented singers and musicians here at Full Gospel? I think I could listen to them over and over and over again. I think I should grab one of those albums so I can sing along with them at home. Oh, hey, Bill, do you know what I just realized? What's that, Jenna? Well, we haven't been able to hear you sing yet this season. Oh, yeah. I tried several times, but it seems like every time I would start, something would interrupt it. Pastor Ryan did. Well, Bill, we have a few moments. Why don't you take the time and sing for us? Oh, wow. Thank you, Jenna. I would love to. (gasps) Wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, no. Hold on, Bill. Oh, man. I knew I wouldn't get to sing for everyone this year. Mm. Wait, what? You're going to tell me that we're all out of time, aren't you? Well, no, not at all. Actually, I, I didn't want to miss it, so I wanted to make sure that I was here to, to hear you sing. Oh, oh man, I'm so excited. You know what? I have a great idea. Why don't we all sing together? What? Really? You want us to join with you? Absolutely. I would love to sing a Christmas carol with my friends. How about we wish you a Merry Christmas? All right, that's up to fun. Uh, hey, Bill, why don't you, you start? I'll play the guitar, and uh, then we'll join in with you. Sounds great. Yeah, you start with the first verse, and we'll join in with you. Mm-hmm. All right, you ready? Yeah. Here we go. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Well, Bill, that, that was unlike anything I have ever heard. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much, guys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. Well, I, think, I think we should uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, that sounds like a good idea, Pastor Ryan. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye-bye.